Hey everyone, welcome back to Learn With Me. I'm Deborah Hansen, and today we're going to go through Unit 2, 2.2. And so we're going to get started on that. So Unit 2 is 15 to 25% of the AP exam, just like Unit 1. So there's quite a bit to learn from this one. We're going to look at, okay, so the 2.2 is thinking, problem solving, judgments, and decision making. So what we're going to go through today is just the different CED questions, as well as what the essential knowledge is that the College Board wants us to know for this section of the test. So I'll go through that. This session, this uh, section is really quite key term heavy, and it kind of just reads like that. It's so I think maybe it's going to seem like one of my key term videos, but it's really not. It's actually the content that goes with the CED. I will still make a key term video because I think those are helpful when you have the definition and a real life example. But if if it kind of looks like that and you're thinking, is this for key term video? It's not. Um, anyway, let's let's see what that looks like now. Um, if you really like the content right now, please, if you could subscribe and like my videos, it really does help me a lot. And I've kind of like made a bet with my kids that we're going to make it to 10,000 <laughs> subscriptions, which I know is a really long way, but that's okay. Maybe you can help me one at a time. Okay. So let's have a look at 2.2. So the CD question for 2.2 is explain how psychological concepts and theories account for thinking, problem solving, judgment, and decision making. Okay, so these are some of the key terms that we are going to discuss in this video, but I will, as I always do, I'll make a separate video with those key terms, definition and key term, and uh, sorry, real life example, just to make it easier for you. Okay. So we're going to start off by understanding, thinking, problem solving, and decision making. So basically the overview of the key cognitive processes is concepts, problem solving strategies, judgment, and decision making. And it's sort of the importance of understanding how all of these processes work in our everyday life. Okay, let's keep going. So we're going to start off with concepts and prototypes. So what is the difference between concept and prototype? So the concepts we think of the mental categories that help us organize information. So for example, fruit, includes apples, bananas, oranges. We kind of think of it as like under that umbrella of fruit. Prototypes is the best or most typical example of a concept. So for example, Robin as a prototype for the concept of bird or blue jay or cardinal. It's like we think of it as that's what a bird is. It's a prototype. Okay. We're going to look at schemas. And that's the thinking frameworks of schemas. So let's have a look at the different types of schemas we can have. So we learned this, I think, in, in 2.1, we actually did a little bit talking about the schemas. But anyway, we're going to keep doing that. It's the mental framework for organizing and interpreting information. We know that schema is things that we've learned before. It's like that prior knowledge. But we use that mental framework to organize what is happening for us. Assimilation is integrating new information into existing schemas without change them. So you are kind of like using your, your schema, but you're integrating new information to kind of understand what, what you're seeing. And accommodation is changing schemas to incorporate new information. And so we'll give you some examples about that in the key term video. Okay, then we're going to look at the difference between algorithm and heuristics. So algorithm versus heuristics. Algorithms are step-by-step -step procedures that guarantee a solution. So for example, when you're solving math problems in math class, you are literally using step-by-step -step procedures to get to that guaranteed solution. Well, I mean, not for me because I'm terrible in math, but most of you probably are much better. Heuristics, the mental shortcuts that simplify problem solving, but may lead to some errors. So basically guessing on past experiences. So that would be using heuristics versus using an algorithm, a step-by-step step sort of set um, pattern, I guess. Okay, we're going to talk about representativeness and availability heuristic. Okay, so representativeness heuristics is judging based on how well something matches a prototype. So for example, assuming someone is a librarian because they're quiet and like books. Availability heuristics is making decisions based on the most readily available information. So for example, fearing plane crashes because there was a recent plane crash in the news. We're going to look at mental set, priming, and framing. Mental set is relying on previous solutions or strategies. So for example, using the same approach to solve different problems. Okay. Priming is exposure to certain stimuli influence that influence our decisions. So for example, seeing a word related to kindness makes you more likely to act kindly. 
framing how information is presented affects our decisions. So for example, if you're looking, you're shopping and you're looking at 90% fat free versus 10% fat, you might kind of think about, oh, that one's healthier than this one or that one. So it's using the information that you have to make a decision based on what you see. Okay, we have cognitive biases, which is gambler's fallacy and sunk cost fallacy. Let's start with gambler's fallacy. So it's believing that past events affect future probability. So thinking a coin flip is due to the due to land on heads after several tails. So that's your gambler's fa uh, fallacy. You're kind of like betting on it, basically, that it's every because you've hit like tails so many times that it's now going to land on heads. Okay, sunk cost fallacy is continuing a decision based on previous investments. So staying in a bad movie because you've already paid for the ticket, okay? So, uh, okay, so executive functions and critical thinking. Uh, executive functions is the cognitive processes that help with planning, organizing, and goal-directed behaviors. So basically, when you set up your study schedule for your exams, you know you know that you have to study so many units, you know you have a test coming up or for the AP exam exactly, um, you actually have to plan, organize, and set yourself goals. That would be executive functions. Critical thinking is analyzing and evaluating information to make reasoned judgments. So weighing the pros and cons before you make a decision decision. Okay. Creativity and functional fixedness. Creativity and thinking outside the box, basically. So creativity is generating new ideas and thinking in novel ways. Most of us do that all the time. It's, it's just how we think about new ways we can do things. We think we generate new ideas. Oh, wow, this sounds like a great idea. I'm going to try this. Um, divergent thinking is exploring multiple solutions to a problem. So you don't look at it in just one way. I mean, I, I'm also an SAT tutor. And I tell you, every time I tell the kids, especially in the math section, there are multiple ways to solve these problems, right? So it's using that divergent thinking. Functional fixedness, getting stuck seeing objects on sorry, only in their usual function. So basically, if you had to unscrew something, you didn't have a screwdriver, you could use a coin. Well, if you are you are set that you must use a screwdriver to unscrew that screw, and you can't use an alternate method, then you're, you're exhibiting functional fixedness. Okay, last, we're just going to do a little like review here. So some key points to remember from 2.2. Concepts, schemas, and prototypes form the basis of thinking. Problem-solving strategies include algorithms and heuristics. Decision-making is influenced by biases, prior experiences, and cognitive processes. Creative and, think and critical thinking are crucial for overcoming mental barriers. Okay, so that's all I have for today for 2.2. Actually, not a very long one, only with one CED question. So really, you can see it's important to understand all the key terms in this unit to be able to answer the question that the CED has put out for us, okay? So thanks again for listening. Please like and subscribe my videos. And if you want to do, if you want to listen to the key terms video, I'm going to make that one also so that you have the key terms, uh, all of the key terms for this particular section of the video. Thanks a lot. See you next time.